If you're new here, howdy, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. I hope that you've been and enjoyed uh, this holistic view to a collection of RC parts which have been and turned up here in the mail today. Howdy, it's Matt and in this episode, I've got some RC mail and we're gonna be taking a look at a comparison between the TBS Nano and the Mini V2 receivers. So with that said, uh, I'm kind of hoping that I've got some GPS units in here. Uh, and the reason why I'm saying I'm hoping I've got some GPS units in here is because uh, you may or may not know... Uh, well, we're done with it. Oh, there it is. Right, so... You may or may not know that I'm an absolute massive fan of not only the Dart 250G, but also the Drift. Now, due to one of the locations where I fly is that I don't know why, but I just have terrible trouble getting a GPS lock. And you'll notice down in there is a great big GPS puck. Now, rather than me trying to show you how big it is, let me just show you how big it is on top of the <laughs> drift. Just look at the size of that GPS puck. Uh, that's a 20 quid uh, GPS puck. Or t yeah, it's 20 quid. Um, they are the big picks ones. I'll put a link to those in the video description because they are absolutely fantastic. Uh, and one thing which I've really struggled with is being able to get a GPS lock. Uh, and th there was one original issue might have been to do with one of the frequencies which I was using. And uh, Anyway, one thing and another, I thought, right, I need to get to the bottom of this, so I've solved the problem for me right now, but what I would like to do is compare those types of GPSs compared to the Benetian ones. So there's some Benetians uh, 220, let me guess right, it's a Benetian, uh, oh, what is, oh right, <laughs> sorry, I ordered a uh, camo face mask. Um, that's not what I wanted, <laughs> that's not what we're supposed to be looking at. Uh, let's just get on to a point. Oh yeah, right. So there is a Benetian 180, there's a Benetian 220, and there's a Benetian uh, 880, if I remember correctly. Now the difference between now the difference between the 180, the 220, and the 880 is that the 180 you basically don't want to use because it doesn't have a battery on board, hence why it's cheap. It's the cheapest one. The 220 is the good one as in that it's that nice balance between being inexpensive and it has a battery. And by the way, the reason why you want a battery in your GPS module is that it means that if you go to the same flying location and power on again, chances are that you're gonna get a satellite lock much faster than what you would have done without the lock, uh, without the battery, if that makes sense. It remembers the satellites which it had in the sky. That's the, uh, that's the easiest way of explaining it. Uh, and the 880 is the only difference, and, I'm, and again, I am simplifying things, and I'll put specifications in the video description, but the difference between the 220 and the 880 is the 880 has an onboard magnometer, or compass, and that, of course, then means that it would be perfect for a multi-rotor with INAV, or similar, because uh, unlike a fixed wing, a 220 would be ideal, okay, because you're not yawing that fast, are you? Okay, it's fixed when you don't turn direction that quickly, and uh, the GPS is able to compensate for that. However, with a multi-rotor, you are able to yaw on a dime and not actually go anywhere. So having a compass on a multi-rotor is absolutely key. Uh, for fixed wing, not really needed. In fact, it's highly recommended that you don't, uh, in short. So, oh, and that is the difference between the two. Whoa, okay. And the size of the antenna, wow. Let, let, uh, I'm, I'm not apologizing for a bit exciting because I think this really does uh, I so that is the Benetian uh, 220, and let's get this out and we'll have a quick look. Okay, so the 220, uh, and this is the other reason why the 880 is better. Okay, for most applications, is because the size of the antenna on it is absolutely huge. So let's just put these side by side, so you can have a look, and and I can have a look as well. And there, this is, and you can tell by my excitement. This is the first time I've seen these, uh, so I'm learning. And look at the size of the board as well. Right. Okay. So let's get these zoomed right in so you can have a look. Now, uh, my cutting board down here uh, is in centimetres. So that one is approximately three centimetres by three centimetres squared. And this one is pretty much two centimetres by two centimetres, so about half an inch and an inch, okay? So 
on the left hand side, you, well, let's have a quick look at these. So you'll notice both of them are branded. We have ports on the bottom. Uh, we have built-in batteries as well. That's something which we definitely do want to see on these GPS units because as I explained a few moments ago, that does mean that you'll pick up a GPS fix quicker, especially if you're going back to a location which you've previously flown between. Now the price differentiation between these two wasn't um, it wasn't the 880 was not as twice as expensive as the Venetian 220. Okay, now we'll get to the antenna size in just a moment. I wanted to go off slightly off topic because uh, the Zo HD Co Pilot, which I had here earlier uh, a couple of days ago, which has now gone off to New Home, and we'll get an update on that very shortly, uh, is that that is the GPS which the uh, so HD Copilot use and it's pretty good okay uh, so what I would say is that if in doubt buy the 220 or if you're skin go for the 220 you have a little bit more money and maybe a larger model then without a doubt go for the larger uh, 880 now the reason why I'm saying go for the larger 880 is because look at the size of the two antennas so this grey surface on the top, if the, it focuses, that grey surface, that metallic surface just there, is the antenna. Now it doesn't take a rocket science to work out that this antenna area is pretty much twice the size of that one. As such, it will be quicker, faster and more reliable to pick up satellites with this 880 version over the 220 version. Now I'm not saying the 220 is rubbish, I'm just saying that that is a cheaper option and may be more suitable to smaller models, okay, where weight is a concern. However, if weight and price are not a concern, then you would definitely want to consider a larger GPS unit such as the Venetian 880. Oh, and it was a really daft one. I just want to stress in the very beginning, I bought both of these out of my own money for my own abuses, uh, and I am still very much a big fan of the big ones which we saw a moment ago, uh, because those have been super reliable for me, and one thing which I want to do and my reasoning for buying both of these is because what I would like to do is put them into a model and record from the moment they're turned on to the moment we get a satellite lock so that requires us to go from zero to six satellites and a GPS lock where we can fly okay and what I would like to do in the test is to do it with both these and my original one. Now it's going to be slightly unfair with the ones which are in my models right now because they've already been turned on where I am. Uh, what I would do is literally just power these on in, in my office where I can never ever get a, a GPS lock just because the way the office is designed. Uh, and with that said, is that what we'll then do is that we'll go and take these out in the garden uh, and then we'll do a time account on this Venetian 880 and see how fast it is to go from uh, never being powered on outside here at least in this location from zero to how long does it take to get to GPS lock then we'll power the GPS unit down okay and leave it in roughly the same location in the garden and then power it on again and see what the time frame is we'll do a like a com light for light comparison and we'll do it not only for the GPS unit which I've got in the model already what I'll also do is for that one in both circumstances but we'll also do it for the 880 as well now there is one other metric not only the time which it takes for us to get a GPS lock is that I also feel it would be quite a nice real world example is to actually fly the model around with each of the GPS units in and see how it well it does for GPS reception okay in other words fly it around for two minutes and see how many satellites that we end up with uh, and by the way I will be turning the Galileo Galileo, uh, Galileo uh, satellites on the stat setting on within I have now those of you which don't know about that is a very simple setting I'll put a link to it in the video description I may have already been and put it up on the screen for you you literally turn it on and my alarm goes off on that note <laughs> and you literally turn it on 
and it doesn't matter if your GPS supports it or not because if it doesn't support it, it supports it, then it's just ignored. Okay, but if it does support it, is that you get the uh, extra satellites in the sky from the Galileo constellation of satellites, which are also in the sky as well. So not only the GLONASS and the normal satellites, you also get the potential use of extra ones. That's why when I'm flying around now with the Drift or the Dart, is that I can quite easily have 23 to 26 satellites uh, on my model. And that for me and you is absolutely fantastic because A, that gives us more satellites, more redundancy, okay, and you know, it, it increases the likelihood of our model coming home. So, right, that is a lot of talk about GPS units. And I make absolutely no apologies for that because I think it's super important. I think it's going to be a really cool test uh, to see which one's better. And in fact, I would those of you which own these, I would love to hear your uh, feedback on that. And by the way, there is a slight interesting thing on there, which is that that is a double thickness board, whereas the other one was definitely, definitely smaller. Uh, yeah, that one's about a centimetre tall. I will say a good quarter of an inch tall uh, compared to the other one, which was tiny. Okay, uh, by the way, I will put links to these, that one, and anything else which I've got here as well on the desk uh, in the video description. Uh, wherever possible, those will be affiliate links, uh, so that if you use those, you will be supporting this channel. Remember, that is something which I'm always 100% uh, open and clear about. Uh, unfortunately, not from the off on this video, but you now fully well know. Uh, next one is a delivery from a company which I want to just put out there is that I'm super happy exists. The reason being is that during the lockdown and I, I, is that I have become very appreciative of being able to source items within the UK and literally getting them next or the next working day, obviously depending upon the shipping option which I've chosen. Even having stuff delivered on a Saturday, I think that's absolutely fantastic and as such I am very appreciative of that because Certain things in this environment, which we've been put into ourselves, uh, had ourselves in, put ourselves into, um, it has been a little bit of an eye opener. And being able to, I, I'm not going to go off the topic, but you you can kind of understand where I'm going with this. Now, let me just get in here first because I know that there'll be an invoice in that, so I'll move that out of the way. Uh, my point I was trying to make: Hobby RC. It's a UK-based company, uh, and I get a sweetie. Oh wow, brilliant! Yeah, so it's Hobby RC. Uh, and you typically get a sweetie in there, and they ran out of sweeties during the pandemic. He couldn't get any more made. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll give that to one of the kids in a minute. Uh, right, so what have we got in the stash? I need to put that to one side a moment. Okay, so the first thing is, is that I was chatting in the Long Range Hooligans uh, Facebook group, and this came highly recommended from what I, I, I was looking for alternative options to my transmitter. Uh, my crossfire uh, for a little bit of extra. Well, to be honest, the let me show you the immortal antenna which I've got on the transmitter has been absolutely fantastic. Okay, it it just works and it works really well. Uh, and but I wanted something which was perhaps a little bit more directional, and I just wanted to try out a different option, if I'm perfectly honest. And this came up as potentially one of the best options. Now, I know that there's a, uh, a round plastic one, which apparently gives you a little bit of better options, because it makes it bounce off the ground, as Alex Greaves uh, explains. However, I, I, I wanted something just a little bit more directional. So that's what I've been and gone for. It's the True RC True Mox. Uh, and this one is for 868 megahertz. Now, I'll let you know how this works out over the next couple of weeks. In short, watch this space. It wasn't very expensive. Uh, and like I said, I, I was chatting with a couple of other pilots. They've used them and uh, they were impressed with them as well. And I, and I was chatting, with, and also I spoke to Josh, who has got the other, the TBS antenna and he wasn't terribly impressed with it so I wasn't going to pay 24 quid for an antenna which one of my flying buddies wasn't that impressed with uh, so I thought I'd spend 15 quid on an antenna which neither of us had uh, and we'll see how, what it's like. Now that is obviously directional compared to uh, just a round one, uh, just a normal dipole uh, so yeah it would be very very curious on that one uh, to see how that works out. Oh! 
done one of these yet? All oh, right, let's put everything to, uh, and while we're here, I'm just gonna leave that there blatantly on the desk. Uh, is that this is a Maytech airspeed sensor. Now here's some irony for you, is that right now you'll notice that I bought, I've bought a couple of items from Banggood. Now the irony is, is that it's actually cheaper for me to buy these items from Hobby RC in the UK than what it is for me to buy this directly from Banggood at the moment. Uh, and anyway, this is, and I've not used one yet, this is the airspeed sensor uh, for the Maytech flight controllers or other flight controllers which accept uh, an airspeed sensor. Uh, now, I, it, all it basically does is measure the difference in air pressure between these two tubes, okay? Now, if you ever fit in one of these on your model, now I'm gonna use a very bad example, okay, uh, is, uh, which is a much smaller model, which you wouldn't normally fit an airspeed sensor like this on a model. You want this in tip, okay, this, uh, your end, and they've got some holes here on the side. You want this in undisturbed air. Okay, so if you were, like, imagine you had a twin motor, like uh, the Olber Bird, for example, and you had a motor magnet, you wouldn't put the airspeed sensor behind the motor because the, 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 the propeller is always going to be filling up with air. You want it on the front or out of the way of everything else so it gets clean air. And of course, you also want to keep it up slightly uh, so that it's up above the ground so it's not going to catch on anything. I've seen people with airspeed sensors. In fact, the older bird, there's a hole in the nose for the airspeed sensor. I get that. I understand why they put that in the nose. However, from a practical point of view, what's normally the first thing which hits the ground? On a less than I need, let's add to that, then a less than ideal f landing, yeah, it's the nose. So you're going to rip off 20 quid's worth of airspeed sensor. So, yeah. If you need to, uh, get it out on the wing if you can, but wherever you put it, make sure it's in clean air. Don't put it behind the fuselage, put it on the wing or out near the nose somewhere, so in, in undisturbed air. Okay, anyway, that was my point being. So, yeah, let's have a quick look at this, and I hope it comes up with some wires, because does it need wires? Or was it? Well, that's a bit annoying. It would have been nice if it came with some pin connectors, which it didn't. That's a bit off, maybe somewhere which Maytech could perhaps, and th there's me just zoom in, I'll just zoom in on it, yeah, just to zoom in so you can see what's going on, and let's put that into one, so there's the airspeed sensor, that is approximately, so that's 10, uh, about 10 centimetres long, uh, there's our board uh, as well, that's about 2 centimetres by 2 centimetres, and we literally just connect, maybe cut these, the other thing is as well, is that this tube, which got provided, uh, is that the tube also needs to be equal lengths, okay? Uh, well, it doesn't have to be like millimeter precise, it just makes sense that the tubes are the same length, okay? So don't have one which is like one inch long and the other one like 10 foot, okay? You, you might get issues with that, but try and keep the tube the similar length it's, uh, so that the distance traveled between the two is very similar, okay? Uh, and then what we got on the back of here, we have a uh, ground, 5 volts, and then SIG, which I was presuming signal. There's a half setting, I don't know what that is, I really have not uh, read the manual. But I can also tell you what I'm also going to do, because uh, I was going to order some, and now this is turned up, it's going to be perfect, uh, is that I am just going to go and nick about an inch of that tube. I'm going to pop that over there because I'm going to cut that up into smaller little O-rings and start including that as clips on the bottom of the control horns, okay, uh, because I noticed one of my Dart 250 ones was coming a bit loose, tiny little uh, ring around it, using a bit of fuel pipe or air pipe as the case may be here, uh, and jobs are good, so yes. Happy days, that's in there. Uh, it was also nice to see it was in a sealed bag as well. Uh, the reason why I say it was nice to see it in a sealed bag is so then you know that no dirt, etc., has been and got up the nose of the airspeed sensor. So we're going to pop that in there. Uh, watch this space, I will get that added to. I don't know which model yet. I genuinely don't know which model. Uh, I... Yeah. Might be the Olber Bird. Watch this space. So yeah, airspeed sensor. Again, my alarm's going off. I need to get something done very shortly. 
Uh, next up is, I'm going to put the TBS receivers to one side a moment, okay. Next one up is my third, is my third F411 WSE flight controller. Uh, and again, this was one of those items which was technically cheaper to buy from Hobby RC, considering that I was buying other items as well, than it was via Banggood. Work that one out, okay? So, uh, yeah, this is, why would you choose the Maytech F411 WSC flight controller over another one? The first one is, well, this, this, there's two major reasons, I would say. The first one is the form factor. So if we zoom in and we take a closer look at it, is that you'll see that this is approximately three centimeters by three centimeters, or about an inch by inch square. Okay, very rough sizes there. I'll see that. I'll just put that on my bench just there. Okay, so that is the first reason is because of the size. The second reason why you would perhaps want to consider the Maytech F411, and I'll put that up on the side so you can see that it's a double stacked board. Is because, <coughs> excuse me, is because if I can find a screwdriver and I'll show you, is that on this board, so not only do we have uh, our S1, we have two motor outputs available to us, okay, so we could do a twin motor model if we so wished, but we can also have four. PWM outputs. Now this may not be technically correct because I'm uh, half looking on the board to see if there was another out server output, but uh, pretty sure there's four usable PWM channels for uh, ailerons, rudder, elevator, and then something else on your model. Because you can double up, you don't have to have your radio on some separate channels, you can all have them on one. Now, there's only one bad thing which I can say about this board, and I'll show you what it is in just a moment. And I'm just picking it apart, you'll notice that there, if I turn this around and put this down, that that there is some pins, there's a joiner between the top board and the bottom board. So there's the plug in there, so go really careful though, because I did bend one of my pins on a different one. Um, anyway, getting to the other reason why you may want to consider this flight controller is because you'll notice the shunt resistor just there and yes, that does mean that you have a current sensor. So when I'm out flying the Dart 250 over there, I know that when I'm using a Lion Pack that I have the potential, excuse me, up to use 3500 milliampheres. I haven't got that far. But I can tell you over a flight yesterday that I did use 2,200 milliampheres and flew in the sky for 52 minutes. Now that having the current sensor is a for me a key requirement for endurance models. Okay, so just having a single maybe a little flight control like this one, the Knox B1, for example. I've just dropped the lead out. Okay, so for a cheap example, would be something like that, which is really inexpensive, literally half the price of one of those. Uh, that would be fantastic. Okay, uh, for a model where you, where current draw and endurance isn't a major priority for you. Okay, so I own several of these F4 Knox uh, V1 boards, uh, and they're slowly getting. It, by the time you may see this video, it should be fully supported by iNav because I sent Constantine uh, the two of these boards for him to use to then get added to iNav, and of course, with Stefan's work and a couple of other developers' work as well. These will get supported in the very near future. However, these are half the price of those, but they the the Maytech F411, but these do not have as many inputs available. Oh, and that has a double camera switcher, but these are half the price, so it's horses for courses, is what I'm trying to say. Depends upon, I well, know, what I am trying to say is that it depends upon the application. There are applications like the ZOHD Dart 250, which you can't see because I'm zoomed so far in, where it would make absolute sense to pay the extra to have a small flight control and to have the current on there, to have the camera switching, which was the other reason which I, meant, or I was going to mention about this, is that not only do I have the FPV camera in the front, but I also have an under FPV camera as well. Okay, so I have a rear facing camera. And that's one of the nice things about many of the Maytech uh, flight controllers, is that you have a second 
camera input, so adding in a second camera is absolute child's play. So anyway, let me just get back in because there's only one bad thing which I can say about this flight controller if it ever focuses. I think I've gone in too far, let's go out a bit, there we go, right. The only one bad thing which I can say about this flight controller, and it really is just one, is that you'll notice that you have battery ground and positive, so there's your power supply comes in that side. We've got a shunt resistor where we measure the voltage drop, hence we can work out the current uh, uh, in there. And then we have the ESC positive and ESC negative. Now the only negative which I can say about this is that you have to solder your motor a signal wire to either S1 or S2, or normally it's S1 there. That is an absolute royal pain in the ass to do, and as such, that is the only one negative which I can say. I would have much preferred this to have been a pin uh, on the top board somewhere, okay? Because look, there is room on the top. Let me just put this side by side. Uh, which way around is it? Yeah, so that goes like that, okay? There is room for an extra pin just there on that board, and I would have personally liked to have seen the pin out uh, on this flight controller to have an extra pin just there for the motor because soldering to a pad is just a royal pain in the rear. Okay, uh, and I don't know if you knew this or not, but basically, especially in air, in air applications uh, where parts are subject to large numbers of vibrations is that generally speaking in, and in, even in larger aircraft of course is that most, most connections are done by crimp connections because if you solder something to a board it has no flexibility in it whereas uh, a cable like in there for example with the connector that has loads of flexibility in it and of course if your model's getting shunted around etc etc uh, it makes sense that print connections would work. So there, that is the Matek F411. I own now own four of those, uh, sorry, three of those. Uh, and I've got one in the drift, I've got one in the Dart 250, and I don't really know where this one's going just yet. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, it, I wanted other things, from, I'll sort that out later. Uh, I wanted a collection of other things from uh, Hobby RC, so I just bought one of those while I was at it because it just made overall the shipping cheaper and I, I am leaving that there purely on purpose. And by the way, if that code expires, uh, chances are somebody's got a, a newer version as well. Right, now let's move on to the next set of goodies. Now, I've got to be honest with you, I am a TBS fanboy. I have personally been very, impressed with the TBS kit. I have only ever had, well until the last week, I have only ever had one fail safe and one unscheduled landing due to very specific conditions and Matty may have oh, of course left his transmitter on 10 milliwatts and he was of course definitely, definitely not in a valley behind some woods not very high off the ground and definitely did not have to walk quite far to go and fetch his model because it fell safe uh, and, and, and the, the vector didn't kick in return to home because it was below. Like I said, I, I was definitely not in a valley Okay, when that happened. So yeah, besides that, the TBS kit has been absolutely brilliant. I've got, a, a, it's not cheap. I've got, a, a, the R9 stuff is way, way cheaper, okay, and does a you're gonna hate me for saying this, a similar job? Is that is that allowed to be said? R9 and TBS Crossfire, they are similar systems. They both achieve the same goals. They may just have slightly different qualities and slightly different ranges. Is that being polite to both sides? I think it might be. Uh, but anyway, just getting back to my point, I am, I, I, I've, I paid the extra for that, okay? I've got to be honest with you, I think I grumbled at the time and went for the bigger module, which was something like a hundred summit quid, okay? I can now tell you, like a year on, that was really good value for money, because I've seen guys, just keep this polite, playing around with their screen and Lula scripts to bind receivers and do other stuff, okay? on their transmitter. What a royal pain in the rear. The amount of time which it has saved me and 
lack of frustration, and there's my descent, I'm going to have to turn that off now. Um, the lack of frustration which I've had with the OLED, uh, the OLED screen on the back can be enabled to change all the settings, maybe power, binding for example, and just ease of use because of that on the back, that has been worth every single penny paying the extra. So my wholehearted opinion on the TBS kit is that if you're going to go balls deep into TBS, go balls deep, get the big transmitter um, because the time which you save just through the rear screen compared to mucking around with Lula scripts and uh, really frustrating that to absolute ease that was worth the extra money okay so anyway my point being is that I'm quite open and honest about this I quite like TBS okay I'm also very wary of the iPhone effect which is that when you pay a lot of money for something you kind of have to say it's good because you spent a lot of money on it all right that's not the case it has been pretty flawless until very recently and unfortunately in this bag here I'm 99% sure I have a faulty nano receiver. Now, it happens. That's all I'm going to say. And literally, when I lobbed the model, it hadn't even got like 200 meters in the sky uh, and it fell safe to hold me. And again, that kind of iterates. When you're setting up models with iNav, etc., always make sure your fail safe works because. That one fell safed right in bloody front of me, uh, and I was like, what the? And with some further range testing, really disappointed with this one. So I've been chatting to Mike from Hobby RC. It's not an issue. Uh, it's my job today to get this one open, and we'll get this one open. We'll compare these two different receivers because I've got the TBS Nano Crossfire, and you're gonna have to zoom in because you're not gonna believe how small this is for a full range receiver. I don't know what TBS class full range has. I, I'm gonna say 20 kilometers. <laughs> All right, it's probably way more than that. Uh, so anyway, let's get in there and take a look. Uh, so I bought this from Hobby RC a couple of days ago. Uh, like I said, I've got the, this one is definitely faulty. Now, I don't know whether it's the board itself or it's the antenna or something in between. Uh, I'm running the latest firmware. But yeah, fell safe and within 200 meters in front of me is not right. And I'm not upset about that because, hey, it was TBS, it was Toby RC. Mike's been absolutely fantastic. And I've gone through and read the things. It, 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 it happened. So I don't want to make a, a fuss of that because I don't think it's needed, uh, as I'm sure you would appreciate. Stuff like that happens. And the rest of the my experience with the TBS kit has been absolutely brilliant. So with that said, let's get this one out, which is the... This is a TBS Nano receiver, uh, and this is billed as being a full range receiver. Now you do get some tiny leads in there, and you also do get, uh, and in fact, the only one thing which I could say about this, bad about the Nano one, is that they include straight pins for soldering up on the board, whereas that I would have liked 90 degree pins. So that's the only thing which I think they could improve upon for this receiver is not the receiver itself, it's the accessories which we get with it, which is no biggie because I got them in the bag. However, it would have been nice that they were actually included. Now, you wait for this. So something which could potentially do 20 kilometers plus. <laughs> Look at the size of that. It is approximately one centimeter by two centimeters or quarter of an inch by half an inch, ish, three quarters of an inch. Okay, it is absolutely tiny, and that is a full range receiver from TBS. Now, the other thing which I like about the micro is that it does come with their immortal antennas, and to be honest, I think that's probably what's wrong with the other one uh, which I've got over there. I don't think it's well, or I don't, I, I would suspect that's what it is, but yeah, it that's told on this one up should be charms play. If I remember correctly, you have grounds, five volts, channel one, channel two, three, four, uh, oh, no, three, four, and then you've got their 
SDA and SDA L, which they call, and you really cannot see that, sorry. Let me zoom right in so you can see this how blooming small this thing is. Okay, so let me just go back. So that's ground 5 volts, channel 1, channel 2, 3, 4, and then you've got SDA and SDL, or they call it BST for their telemetry on there as well. There are an extra couple of pads if you wanted to get RSI, manual RSSI off them as well. We turn it over. Uh, yeah, absolutely tiny. So uh, what I'll be doing with mine is putting some 90, uh, 90 degree uh, pins on here, uh, putting the antenna on there as well, and then covering that whole lot with some, in, uh, some heat shrink tubing as well. Again, just being careful to keep the heat down because it is the electric board down there and I just use a cigarette lighter and take, especially when you're using larger heat shrink, it's always better to take your time doing that so that you end up with a really nice tight fit over the top. Okay, and then what I'll do is just press it down lightly to make sure the antenna is permanently welded to the board. Okay, so that's the Nano TBS receiver. So I, I'm just gonna put that on the piece of paper so we don't lose it. It's that blooming small. Now the other receiver which I have had, and I've got to admit it's my favorite receiver, uh, has been absolutely fantastic. And I can see the battery going down on the camera above us. So rather than us losing that, let's get that plugged in. There we go, we're powered back up and out, oh, happy days. Uh, as I was saying, the uh, the receiver which I've been thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with uh, is the TBS Micro V2 receiver. Now, I don't know what the difference is between the V1 and the V2, because uh, I've only ever used V2s. So let's get this open and take a look. Now, this one I would class as easier, okay? Although it does cost slightly more. Uh, and the, also you don't get, you get this thin metal antenna which you're supposed to put in your model uh, like that at 90 degrees, but I always take them off. And the reason why I always take them off because I also bought, and this is the negative to the V2 receivers, is that you have to buy an immortal antenna separately uh, to go with this receiver. So yeah, the one thing which I'd like to see about the TVS Crossfire, the, the Micro V2, is to include an immortal antenna out of the box, and maybe if you must, because you include two of the, the flexible ones, I'm sure they work fine, I've just never used one. <laughs> Why would I when I, I know that we've got something like that which will hold its uh, position in a model. There you go, that's the Dart 250. You'll see that its position's being held in there. It works out really well. No floppy leads uh, floating around. If I grab the uh, ZoHD Drift, you will see that I've got it with the propeller pointing out the back. I did try it horizontally. Didn't work at all. Uh, it, it, yeah, it was terrible. Uh, so anyway, I've always paid the extra and bought the uh, immortal antennas and it's again the one thing which I would say it would be really nice if that was included in the kit rather than just the plain Jane wire ones. In the kit you also get some heat shrink which may have been quite nice in the nano one as well. Again I'm just being picky but it, I'm sure you can appreciate that the, it's the small things which make it especially in a premium product like TBS items. Uh, connecting these up, so that, that just put this for size by size comparison, let's put this onto the, the workbench, we, should we say it's twice the size? Is that a fair summary? Uh, let's zoom right in so you, so you can see what's going on there. That would be a fair assessment that the micro, sorry the nano is less than half the size of the micro V2. Uh, as far as weight that's just a tiny circuit board compared to, I think that, to be honest, I think the heat shrink weighs more than the board underneath there. But uh, yeah, connecting these up is absolute child's play if you find the right connector. Uh, now, in many of my models, I have taken their servo, uh, their channel wire out. I need to make sure this is the right way around. Like so. There, that's in there now. Okay, so. Let me just quickly give you a quick run round on this one. You have the antenna, which we saw a few moments ago. I will be cutting that out and replacing it with uh, the uh, immortal antenna. Now we have ground five volts, channel ones through to four, which I want to stress, and you we need to go in further, don't we? There we go. That's probably a little bit better. 
channels one, two, three, and four. Now, I want to stress that you can do in the back of the transmitter change the outputs of these. So normally, channel one of mine is S bus. Uh, also, a minor, and I, I don't want this to be a whinge. I'm just trying to give you like this rounded opinion, uh, which is that in previous, in a really old version 2.2 of the TBS software for the transmitter and the receivers, is that you used to be able to have S bus out on channel one and channel four or PPM out on both of these. However, now in the latest update, you can only have SBUS out on channel one or maybe CRSF or something else random on channel four, which is a bit of a pain if you wanted to use uh, maybe an SBUS to PWM converter. That is a bit of a pain. And then on the opposite side, you have your BST connection, uh, which is that will be ground five volts and then SDA and SDL uh, for connection onto your flight controller if you want that or need that. Now the other reason why I like the, uh, the V2s is because the installation of them is really, really simple, which is that you just use their breakout board. So instead of maybe chopping this wire in half, like I've done on many of mine, okay, and then soldering up my own connection wires, which is perhaps, uh, those of you who remember the binary, that's exactly what I did underneath that one, uh, is that instead what I can do is just connect this up. So I've got a ground and channel one, and we'll grab, oh, we'll grab their wire, which is probably not the right wire, but uh, it will do. And if I get this right round, right round, there you go. That makes the install into a model, if I zoom out now, much, much easier. And of course, in a model, which is anything bigger than a Dart 250, like we saw a few moments ago, well, actually, I've got to be honest with you, the micro, which I've got in there, I actually have that breakout board in there <laughs> because I, I tried the nano in there and I had issues. Um, so yeah, inside of there, it's actually wrapped in, um, uh, we'll get to that in a moment, foil. Uh, but yeah, I've got to be honest with you, I actually even have that breakout board. So I haven't tried to save a few grams. I've just gone for practical ease because that is just so, so easy. Uh, to do and it doesn't weigh that much in the scheme of things although I'm sure I would get a tiny bit of extra flight time in the sky uh, if I took that out and saved a gram or two by having it in there. So you can connect up to channels 1, 2, 3 and 4 off that little pull out uh, breakout board. Uh, yeah, so we, we've gone on a bit of a journey here, haven't we? And I, it, we've gone from a journey from talking about GPS modules into airspeed sensor flight controllers uh, and into a very interesting antenna, which I can't wait to try out that. I'll try and hopefully try that out tonight. Uh, and we have gone off into a bender about TBS uh, and their crossfire system. Uh, I, I, and again, I have to put my hand up. I like it, it has worked almost flawlessly for me. We had that one situation which I mentioned earlier which I don't feel too bad about because Andy who was using Dragon Link on low power fell saved within 50 meters of where I fell saved a, a couple of days later. Okay so that's why I don't feel bad about that because even Dragon Link wet the bed. That's the polite version. I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> I'm doing my best. I really am fucking doing my best. <laughs> right, sorry. Okay. Whereas Dragon Link also had the same issue in a very in a very similar location, but just on a different date. So that made me feel very bad. Uh, very good. I hasten to add. I have had a faulty one. Uh, I'm 99% not on that one. It's the one in the other one there. 99% sure. It, and I don't feel bad. It is not like it's been a regular occurrence. Every other item receiver which I've had and flown with TBS has been absolutely fantastic. And as an overall picture to the Crossfire system, I am a fan. And the only complaint which I re and the, 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 I've mentioned minor stuff here. The only complaint which I can make, and it is a very valid one is that the cost of it, that was 35 quid. Best part, and again, the, the, the TBS prices are blatantly price fixed. Okay, there's no two ways about it. Uh, they, they are price fixed prices, and it's the same price for all the receivers everywhere. Okay, uh, and that was 35 quid, and I had to buy the Immortal Antenna on top of that, because they include the crappy, not the less, uh, my less than ideal wire antennas in there, but they do include two, so. I would have had just preferred that one. Uh, and the Nano is absolutely tiny, but again, that's still the best part of 30 quid a time, which 30 quid a receiver starts getting a little bit of expensive, doesn't it? Um, so yeah, that's the negative, that's, uh, that's the big negative to the TBS kit. It can get quite expensive. 
So watch this space for the GPS tests, okay? If you have any questions about Crossfire, please just ask, and my experiences have all been my own. Remember, all these parts which you see on this desk have been bought out of my own money and will be abused by me as well. Uh, we've got the Maytek airspeed sensor, look out for a closer look on that one and actually being used. We've got the Maytek 411 WSE, really cool flight controller. I probably should do a proper overview to that one uh, as a separate video. Uh, the True RC antenna, we will get to that one at a later date and I think that was it for today. Questions or comments, let me know down in the comments section underneath this video. If you're new here, howdy, I'm Matt, welcome aboard. I hope that you've been and enjoyed uh, this holistic view to a collection of RC parts which have been and turned up here in the mail today. Uh, as you can see, I do get through quite a lot of RC kit and it has been a general discussion about from GPSs to flight controllers to, to radio systems uh, today. But don't forget, we also have a wide collection of models here as well. If that's something which takes your fancy, don't forget to press the red subscribe button. Uh, and of course, don't forget to press the bell notification so that you balls let you know when the next video is out because it could be the video on the GPS's, it could be testing out some crossfire stuff, it could be the flight controllers, or we could just be abusing foam. Anyway, the point which I'm trying to make is that I want to say a big thank, big, big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench and for us to talk about RC porn. I've quite enjoyed that, I hope you have as well. On that note, for myself Matt, cheerios!